Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, you know, this is kind of an unplanned episode, and what I'm actually doing is another spread in the uh, Perfect Sketchbook, the one for the Perfect Sketchbook show. In having some discussions with Erwin Leon, the maker of the book, uh, he reminded me that I have some more time. And, you know, I, I thought I was done and had planned to do some other videos, had lots going on. And I thought, no, you know, I really, and he suggested, you know, if I do any more, to just do one across the whole spread. And I'll be honest with you, that had not occurred to me. I've seen people do that, but it just had not occurred to me. And I thought, that, I have got to do that. I've just got to try that. So I've got a whole new scene planned. And so they'll end up being two spreads in this book. You know, and they can decide, I guess, which one is the better one, or I can decide, or something. Anyway, I'm going to take you through some of this, and I'm probably going to divide this video into two parts. The first part today we're going to cover is some of these background trees. And part two will probably be the rocks, and I think I'm going to reserve that for my patrons. Probably the $10 level, the uh, video extras level. Anyway, back to this, uh, and that's the subject today, is uh, we're, I'm doing a fairly complex tree scheme. And that's what I want to talk about, because you'll encounter woods and tree lines that are kind of complex, and they're closer up, so they need to be more detailed. Now, I've incorporated just parts of this. I, I've kind of drawn them the way I want to draw them, but I'm using this for the value ideas. And I, I made up a new composition. I'm going to use these rocks probably here. And then I've just kind of designed some of my own trees. So I'm using basically parts and pieces of both of these in, in different ways. And redrawing them to my liking. But what I want to talk about is how do you handle uh, these complex washes where you're going from distance to foreground. And how do you simplify it? And how do you get that complex interweaving of foliage shapes like here see these that are way in the foreground then you have some that are lighter but then they just sort of roll back into the deeper woods and then you have the real deep woods that you can see back in here and strictly speaking they're not in distinct levels they kind of flow into each other and you could treat it in a stylized way in distinct levels and some artists do that and do it successfully I like to try to get some interlocking flow try to recreate that so how do you do it well things that are distinct edge shapes like these trunks you can mask and you can see I've done that and, and where the transition into the lighter foreground foliage comes I've actually even masked off uh, some of that to help me with the transitions. This is all stuff that's easier to do in the studio than it is in plein air. But I've done it here. And I've masked these tree shapes off. They're not real light, but I want to have a light painting surface to treat them however I want. So that's that part's easy. You just kind of draw this out. And I spent a good bit of time drawing. It's hard to see but uh, drawing some of the shapes, at least generally where the foliage is going to be. All right, so there is probably as many ways to do this as there are our landscape artists. Um, one common way is to just paint through the light colors throughout the whole background. Let that dry, then go back and negatively paint around this foliage. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to paint just these lighter foliage areas and then paint around them. So it's sort of negative painting, but guiding myself uh, with the painting that I've already put down. It's easier to show you than it is to describe it. I'm staying fairly light because these are my highlights. This is my highlighted foliage, my most foreground foliage. So I'm keeping it uh, warmer and yellower and very much in the foreground and you can change color in fact I like to do that you know get some nice little variegations going in the foliage and you're really in no hurry here um, 
And that's what I like about this method. Uh, you can take your time painting this foliage. Uh, you can pick a section at a time and I like to come in here and what I call tipping in is actually just charging under the underneath side of the foliage. I'm using Azo, uh, Azo green, nickel Azo yellow and I'm tipping in underneath with a little Prussian blue. It's a very common foliage color mixture that I, I like to use. It doesn't matter if these edges dry using this and you get a little bit more distinct modeling this way than if you painted the whole light area and then negative painted around it. Again, which is a very valid way to paint. It's just different. This is olive green that I'm pulling in here just to get a few uh, dark shocks in. And let your colors flow and mingle. You want to have good reference like what I showed you. You know, you want to know these are, uh, this is the upper elevations of the mountains here in North Carolina. Or here, I'm not in North Carolina, but in North Carolina, I'm in South Carolina. We're about an hour and a half drive from this place. And uh, these are Fraser firs, I think, and maybe some Douglas firs. And I really wanted these fir trees to look the way I wanted them to look, the way I needed them to look. When you negative paint, you've got to have something to negative paint too. Uh, it's hard to negative paint. I mean, if painting out of your head is hard, paint, negative painting out of your head is even harder without an outline. So you have one or two choices. If you use the other method, you're going to go in and you're going to define that foliage outline really strongly with pencil or something so that when you paint over the light background or unifying wash you'll have a line to negative paint to but using this method um, you don't need a line because this will become my line to negative paint to if that makes any sense anyway you'll see as this goes along this method also allows for some spontaneity like, you know, oh, I didn't draw a foliage there, but I think I'd like some, you know, that kind of a thing. Another thing to always keep in mind, um, I see a lot of people paint trees and and they think, uh, oh, I like, I'm a detail person. I love detail. And so they go in and stipple in every leaf. I don't think that's the right approach. I don't care how detailed or realistic you are. You have got to treat leaf clumps as a mass and if you want to get the proper kind of dimension and look um, it's it's real tempting to just you know like get a sponge or a stipple brush and you know and stipple the the fool out of the trees and get every leaf detail and I see people do that and a lot of people will excuse it by saying oh I just like detail it's like putting in all the detail well all that leaf detail does not make for a convincing tree. It just doesn't. I'm here to tell you. It, it Usually uh, edge detail matters more than minute detail all over. You know, you want to understate to a great degree. And where you suggest detail is usually on the edges of a clump of leaves. So I'm going to go ahead over here and rough in in this one if you have a situation there's another tip for you where you have tree trunks appearing coming in and out of your tree and you just don't know whether to mask them or not because you don't know if they're going to be light or dark or how dark you want to make them in relation to the background it's usually safe bet just to go ahead and mask them because you can always make them dark after they're masked making them light is difficult once you've got paint on there. And I'm looking at reference while I'm drawing. And that's what I'm basically doing. I'm drawing in this foliage with watercolor. You know, in a painting like this, value is more important than the exact color. So, you know, I'm looking at these trees and I'm making these much more yellow green than they are in my reference. But I'm trying to keep it light 
and I'm thinking, you know, I can cool this down if I want to. The important part is to get the value of this foliage uh, versus the foliage that's behind it. For all I care, I could make the uh, foliage here purple. All right, so uh, I went ahead and painted this side over here, basically did the same thing I did over here. Now what I am going to do is paint a distant tree line here because some of that will poke up behind the darker recesses. So let's do that. I've got a mixture of blue. I've mixed a little ultramarine blue and some azo green. And I'm just going to go back here And since this is mostly fir trees, you got a lot of these pointy. And this is very distant. Even more than the reference I have, I'm going to make this seem almost like it's a misty, a misty tree line in the distance. Now, when you're painting around these highlighted things, you can be fairly general. You can leave a little bit of white or paper color, especially on a light thing like this. I'm just going to fade that out. I'm drying my brush and I'm just going to fade that out. Also, oh, that's going to be covered by dark foliage, but I don't want there to be a line. Now, probably about here up, we're going to start seeing that distant tree line and sky hole. So you could actually fill in uh, this value in these little sky holes later if you want, but I'm going to go ahead. It's okay if you kind of overlap some of the what you've already painted and I'm gonna have this tree line just sort of angle down let, and let this tree here stick up above it like it's a, a further hill that's kind of rolling off into the distance don't worry too terribly much about blending but if you feel better not blending and just filling that all in with with the lighter color that's fine so that's my very distant tree line on that side I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing here this actually again this actually is not in my reference but I actually may not see much of these at all by the time I get my darker values in I'm just not sure so uh, some of these uh, decisions I make on the fly and revise as it goes and so there I'm just giving a sort of a dry brush blend out so I don't have a line okay now let me just talk about what we have here this is the the technique sort of in a in a nutshell and there's so many ways you can do it everything you see now that's light is going to be dark and what I've done is I've set myself a base to negative paint to. You could do this with an outline. Like I said, you could draw in all this foliage. Um, then just do your light wash over that. Then come in and negative paint to those outlines. But essentially this is the same thing, except that I haven't done a broad wash for all of that. So that's not really a negative painting exercise as much as painting the foliage first and painting around it. And again, to reiterate, that just gives me a little more control of these foliage shapes and values. Let's get into painting the deeps, and uh, I'll show you how you start to blend that in. It's not just a matter of outlining everything, although you do some of that. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to switch brushes. Because this holds so much water, I'm going to switch to something that I can manage the moisture a little bit better with. All right, so what I've done is I've mixed myself up plenty of dark. I've got Lots of greens and blues here, and even some violets. I like putting violets in some of the deep colors. And the other thing is you, you just work to a plan. My plan is to start from left and work to right, because at certain places I'm going to be rendering, you know, a secondary tree line. And uh, I don't want to be focusing on too many things at once. And you can give yourself goal lines. So these, these masked tree trunks kind of make nice goal lines. Uh, I think I could probably paint up to this as the first and then start working my way over. And then I'll probably stop and, and fiddle in some of the negative uh, painting before 
I start and then work this over. You don't want to work the whole thing at once. Um, it, it's usually very, unless you're a very loose, experienced, loose painter, you know, and are doing it with a big brush. But I'm going to do this sort of intricately. And we're going to start over here. And I don't have to worry about these uh, this transition into the foreground foliage because I've got a little bit of a mask line there, so that's helping me. Normally, if I wasn't masking and maybe on location, I would I would be kind of trying to break that up a little more. And I'm varying the color. Yeah, I just grab some violet. Now I'm going to grab a little yellow. And you see I painted over some of my lighter colors. And you want to do that in varying degrees. I just decided I wanted that darker. Um, but now where I'm getting in where I want to keep it lighter, um, I'm painting around. I'm using the white paper as a guide. And I don't have to worry about the trunks because they're masked. I'm just, while well, before this dries, I'm just adding some variegation. I'm using a 14 overwash with Cosmo Top Spin. It gives me a nice point, but I can press down and get some wide washes if I want to. And at this point, it's okay uh, to leave some white, just as I did here, to leave some white spaces. You can always fill that in later. As long as you have plenty of paint, you really don't have to hurry. Um, it's good to get, uh, and again, I'm, I'm watching my goal line, and I'm going to put a dab or two over here just to make sure I can match that color. I'm going to blend into that masking a little bit. And I'm probably going to stop the deep, uh, foliage right about here and then I may work in a few shadow ones up here but let start letting sky holes peek through now with a, uh, a, a wash my brush out here with a washed out brush um, you can go and start blending and you can start filling in some of these little white spaces you can pull um, pigment into some of that foliage previously painted and it's it's sort of a weaving process and some of that uh, foliage in the background is actually going to be dark like silhouetted foliage and on this is where things just you know they start to get magical pick up another color and work that in Trying to keep my head out of the shot here. So this this gives you a nice sort of uh, dynamic dimensional depth to the foliage without uh, leaving it looking like cutouts, you know, shapes. If I had masked all this lighter foreground foliage, it would start to look like, uh, like cut out paper trees, you know. The advantage to masking that out, if I'd have done it that way, is I could get this really nice contiguous wash and flow. But these are such complex woods, I don't think you need that here. And as long as you're keeping a leading edge moving, uh, I think you're going to be good. Now here I can kind of do a lot of wet and wet because I can paint right over all this. I don't have to worry too much. So what I'm going to do is start with a lighter green. I'm just going to paint right over those areas I painted before. I'm going to try to keep 
all of it wet. Again, don't necessarily worry about every single little white space yet. So you can dot those in later. Like I said, this is one method in probably a hundred. Um, it's a method actually I learned on my own while plein air painting because um, this works great if you can't do any masking. I'll come back and fiddle with those dark areas again later. But now while all of this is still wet, I'm going to dab in some violet here. It's actually conacridone violet. And you always want to be concerned about edges and transitions. And that's why I went to the trouble of masking this foliage off. Now here I don't have any mask, so I'm making sure I don't obliterate my foliage line. <clears throat> worse come to worse, I can sort of uh, doctor that with gouache if I want to. I'm going to get some blues up in here. I'm just trying to add as much variation back here as I can. I just want the woods to be have depth and be interesting. And I can wait till this dries actually before I start working this section. So that's giving me some time to fiddle now. But you know, fiddling should always be with a purpose. And my purpose right now is, is giving myself dynamic contrast and believable layering. You're doing a complex wood scene. You know, that's the kind of detail you want in there. Not just because I want to paint every leaf on the tree, I'm going to make it more realistic. That almost never makes anything more realistic. Mass and good drawing is essential and value 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 it's the biggest area i think that beginners well really even a lot of intermediate painters uh fail at is is paying attention to the values and getting those correct or believable you know when i say correct sometimes it just needs to be believable and some of these dark little paint around holes uh, you can wash your brush out. I just washed my brush out. It's mostly clean water or damp. And now you can uh, soften some of those edges. Uh, this is another technique, though, that you can get carried away with. I'm just wanting to want to keep some of them hard edge, but I just want to soften enough to be able to blend the dark values of the tree with the background and with the lighter values of the tree. And some of this you can actually do later after it's completely dry. You can get a like a bristle brush. It was fun to do it right now while you're um, painting some of the stuff is still fresh and wet. It's not absolutely essential that you knock out every single little speck of white depending on your style, what you want to do. Um, I'm probably going to leave some of them. Because they add little kind of highlight specks that I think are nice. So just think in terms of weaving. You know, you're weaving the background into the foreground with dark and light and softness in places and hard edges in other places. And things are going that way. All right, I've zoomed in a little bit and I'm just going to spend the rest of the time talking about these. So before I lift the mask, I'm just going in and even though this area up here uh, is pretty much uh, open to sky or through the, through the trees is pretty much open to sky, I'm giving some dimension to these tree clumps, foliage clumps. 
just giving a little bit of uh, another layer. And you know, uh, foliage will is in a clump, and it'll roll. You know, the the values will roll under because they're not cut out. So that's something you always have to keep in mind. So the values underneath and behind. And you can see how that gives it some dimension. And I can dry my brush out if I want and just softly blend those up a little bit. You can go in here with a damp brush and just start to see. I don't have hardly any paint. I'm just lo loosening paint that's already there. I'm um, filling in some of these little white patches. Don't be afraid to leave some hard edges. A mistake I see all the time with beginners is beginners like to overblend everything. And you, you just don't want to do that. But you want enough blending so that these shapes tend to merge into each other and look like unified holes. But they're also, in places, they're also going to leave very hard edges. Especially whether they silhouette against a light value or against the sky. And I could go on and do this probably for an hour. But I, I've done enough, I think, to show you. We've got some nice dimensional elements to this foliage. So I think I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to look at lift the mask and work on those tree trunks. All right, so now we're going to uh, bring this all together and start working on these tree trunks. Um, usually uh, when, and I've removed the mask, as you can see, I have a lot of stark white. And what I've done is I've mixed up Mostly trees are just a, like a green or brown, muddy gray. And all I've done is add some some red to my greens that I already had a lot of greens out here on the palette. And I've added some red and some violet to it, and that will make a nice tree color. And what I like to do first is, uh, and I've got, I brought out the heavy hitter here. I've got my Rosemary Kalinske Sable, which has... Uh, just an excellent point. And I like to pre-wet these trees. And you can do it a section at a time. And I'm going to do these two little sections just to, to get started. And you want to keep a firm grasp of where your light source is. And I'm going to start wet and wet here and add shadow. On my right side these these tree trunks are pretty dark uh, but they are they are light enough to stand out against that that background so uh, once again we're, we're thinking in terms of contrast and then where uh, trunks and branches go up under foliage they get a lot darker so you'll see a lot of shadow so again I'm gonna wet this area down here it's okay if I have a little pigment in my brush um, and you can just do the trunks if you want. I, I usually kind of pull a little bit of uh, wetness out into the branch so I don't end up with a, a line right there at the trunk. But let's get a nice, you don't want a sopping wet tree trunk, but uh, I like enough just to be able to charge in some pigment. On this right side and and once I do that um, you know I'll probably do a lot more of the detailing and shadowing uh, wet on dry but if you get just damp paper just slightly damp uh, it won't spread too much and you can get some nice little soft shadowing this is dry up here but I'm shadowing that underneath that foliage 
drying my brush and then blending. Still a little damp down here, so I'm still going to get a little bit of soft spreading as I charge in this color. Sometimes these branches here are a little bit too thick uh, because of the masking. I, pro I should have made them a little finer. But they will seem to get thinner as you add the shadow. Sometimes you can like add the shadow first. Like see this thin branch here adding deep pigment for a shadow. Rinsing out my brush and then just go trace on that edge. And your dampness in your brush just pulls that that pigment from the darker side right over. It's a nice little technique to learn. If you didn't get that, let me show you again on this this thicker branch. So I'm tracing along the dark side of the branch with fairly dark color. So dark you almost can't see it. I'm rinsing out my brush, wiping it out. Now it's just damp and I come trace along this light side, uh, letting my brush touch some of that dark pigment and it just wicks it right over. Now I have an almost perfectly shaded branch. And as this wet on wet or charged trunk dries uh, you can and it's mostly dry now so the it'll spread very little in fact I'm gonna get some very dry detail and just go back and add your little bit of texture again don't overdo it on the texture you want your value to stay right and I've done this smaller tree over here and you can see how I'm continuing to just work everything the same way. Now as you get up here these trees start to get dark and silhouette against the sky. So you want to make sure you know when you get to a sky area like that that you make a transition and this is just at this point especially it's just a lot of fun you don't have to do any charging if you don't want to you can paint everything wet on dry so many th ways to accomplish the same thing in watercolor so many ways you know so when you see me do these things you know I'm not saying this is the only way this is the best way I'm saying only one thing and that's this is my way this is the way I've done it and found some success give it a try if you don't know how you want to paint it all right so we're starting to look pretty good uh, what I'm doing now is just um, making some of these branches recede. I'm just gradually taking the value down on some of them. Uh, and, you know, defining how some go behind others. And I, in some cases, I'm even leave, leaving like a razor's edge highlight on the edge of some of these branches where they're like catching the light. You, you don't want to overdo that or everything is going to look too over sharpened and over rendered, but and stark um, you want there to be some subtlety too so some of these branches can recede to almost being invisible but just subliminally there and I'm just doing things like getting the shadows to go on the trunks to go up behind the foliage very very fun fun process you know, and be sure, uh, like I have on my camera angle here, be sure that you step back every now and then and just take a look and make sure it's all working in context. You don't want some things to stand out too much. And, and a lot of times people paint to the parts. They, 
They paint to make the pieces look good, and they forget about the whole. The whole is so much more important than the parts. It's okay to have the parts be detailed and accurate and, and whatever, but if you don't bring them together in a cohesive whole, then uh, the parts don't matter. Let's see, some of these branches are still looking a little too stark to me, so um, I'm trying to make some of them kind of more of a lost and found impression or just see a little bit of one and not as much of another that's the kind of detail that's important so i'm not detailing for detail's sake i'm i'm going in and i'm adjusting i'm adjusting contrast and i'm saying i want this to stand out a little more i want this to go away a little more and i'm probably going to go back in here with some green and start defining the depths around some of these foliage clumps a little more and even in internally in these shapes well i think it's looking pretty well and i think we're going to call that the end of this video and i hope that gave you some ideas on how to treat complex wooded areas i can't stress enough the importance of getting good reference like this and you can see how much i've departed from it but I've gotten so many clues from for value and structure of the trees, and then I've made it my own. Uh, you can't do this stuff well out of your head unless you've painted the same subject for years and years. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. Patrons, uh, at the $10 and above level, I'm planning on doing a rock tutorial for this whole rock area down here show you my process for breaking these down and painting some sensational rock. I don't know when that'll be, but at some point in the future, I hope you'll, you'll look forward to that. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you in the next video.